This is animal crawl patterns. Uh, just because it's in the blue section, notice we're wearing blue again today, it uh, doesn't mean that it's easy. It's movement preparation, but it's using your own body weight. And if you've been stuck at home and there's no gym equipment and you can't go to a gym and there's no time, well, you can do this in your living room. You can do it anywhere. So you'll see we're gonna do it on this little piece of carpet here. And just because, um, yeah, it's in the blue doesn't mean it's easy. I'm gonna say that again. Just because it's in the blue does not mean it's an easy routine. So we have Miss Stephanie here is gonna help us. And she's a former bodybuilder and she's never done this routine before. So we're gonna have some fun with it. Uh, the good thing about the animal crawl patterns is it really gets the core linked from the lower body to the upper body and makes the core integrate with everything above and below and in between. And we get our uh, big prime mover muscles, but underneath we have our stabilizer muscles. So it's gonna get those. And in the spine, you have stabilizer muscles. It's gonna activate those. So uh, it's a really good routine. It's a challenging routine, and I hope you have fun with it. And I've come up with some goofy names for stuff. Didn't know what else to call it. Uh, so let's have a little bit of fun and do some animal crawl patterns. All right, the first animal crawl pattern exercise is not crawling at all. We're just gonna have uh, Miss Stephanie lay on our back. So let's go yeah, that direction, lay on the back. And her um, knees are gonna be up, her feet are gonna be on the ground, and her hands just comfortably by her side. Um, we're gonna maybe put them out to the side, this one a little bit so we can see. Now, in the lower back, it's called your lumbar, Lumbar support in a car, you might have heard of that. And there's a natural curvature, a lordosis, a natural curvature in that lower back. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kinda activate uh, the, uh, the core, the pelvis, um, and I call this squish the bunny. Now, I love bunnies. I don't wanna squish a bunny. It's just pretend. And we're gonna pretend that my hand here is a bunny. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the bunny underneath Stephanie's lower back. So we're gonna get down here, and I should be able to slide the bunny, and there it is, there's a natural little bunny cave in there, a little bunny warren, and she's gonna go ahead and press her lower back into the rabbit and squish the bunny. It's not a bunny, folks, it's my hand. We're pretending, and release that, Stephanie, good. So when she does that, her pelvis goes into, do it again, her pelvis goes into a posterior pelvic tilt, and then she releases it, and it's a anterior pelvic tilt. If you want to have some more fun, go ahead and do it again, Stephanie, and keep on breathing. You know, she can just keep it here and keep on breathing. Try that. And now she's going to do a Kegel maneuver, which is closing off the flow of urine in midstream. It's that type of uh, feel, and we're going to activate the pelvic floor. So go ahead, Stephanie. Go ahead and squish the bunny. Close the flow of urine off in midstream and try not to contract the buttocks, keep on breathing, and let it go. And there we have it, folks. That's Squish the Bunny, and it's an anterior, posterior pelvic tilt that activates the core and gets everything warmed up and ready for us. The next exercise is glute jellyfish to glute rock lobster. All right, I made that up. Um, you might have heard it called apples and applesauce, but since we're animal patterns here, we have to call animal names. So it's glute rock lobster to glute jellyfish and back and forth, okay? So how do we do that? Uh, I'm gonna have a little towel on the floor. Maybe it's nice so you don't scratch yourself and get any rug burns. So it's a nice cotton towel. So Miss Stephanie's gonna go in a plank. She's gonna lay down with her paws down, okay? So let's go into our paws down, and you're going to be on your elbows, on your forearms. Now, notice how she naturally went into the kind of thumbs up position, but she's now palms down. Um, why do we do that? Well, when she goes palms down, we get a nice activation and a sliding and a good uh, setting of the scapula back here. And we also want to see if she's kind of sagging here, so maybe she can do a uh, posterior pelvic tilt and get that little bit of lordosis out of her back, okay? 
And that's how we start. Okay? You okay, Stephanie? Doing good. Okay, she's doing good. So we're going to keep her here for a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do, and if you don't mind, Stephanie, I'm going to punch you in your glute, right? So I'm going to punch her in her glute, and this thing will probably feel more like a jellyfish. And there it is. It's a jellyfish, folks. But we want that thing to be a rock lobster. So, Stephanie, make this glute into a rock lobster for me. As tight as you can. Charge up your quads. Charge up that glute as hard as you can. And that is more of a rock lobster. And that's what we want, folks. And go ahead and take a little break. All right? So, we want to go into that rock lobster uh, uh, tightness in the quads and in the, in the glutes. And the whole body contracts. Every muscle in the body contracts. And if we had a heart rate monitor, you'd see your heart rate really go up. All right? So let's do it again, Stephanie. And now if you have a partner, you can go in. So pause down. Again, the pause down. So she sets her back. And she gets, okay, so give me that rock lobster back here in those glutes. Rock lobster. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of push this. So, excuse me, crossing camera. But I'm going to push her. And she has to resist me. And I'm going to push at the shoulder, at the hip. I can push down the length of her body, longitudinally. I can come over here. I can push transverse again. I can push against her hip. And she has to resist me. So we want to do this. And we can do some random patterns. And you can have some fun with your friends and family and run around and push the rock lobster. <laughs> Caterpillar. One of my favorite warm-up exercises, uh, very challenging, it really gets the shoulders going, and we can see the, the, um, the posterior or the kinetic chain in the back. So I'm gonna have Stephanie turn her back to us, and then we have this whole um, gristle sheath over our head, it goes into our erector spinae, it goes through the glute ligaments, the sacrotuberous ligament, down the hams, down the calves, and into the feet. So literally from head to toe, there's this one fascial, myofascial connection, and it's called the superficial back line. It's often pretty tight on people and athletes, and it's a good thing to get warmed up, especially if you need to do stuff like burpees or anything really athletic out on the field. So I really like this caterpillar because it's gonna really activate and stretch and warm up this uh, posterior uh, kinetic chain. And also, it's going to get the abs going, and it's going to get arm strength going, and a lot of good stuff. So we can turn back around, Steph. Thanks. Now, what are these grips for? Uh, we're going to show them to you. There's a couple different varieties here. This is a Cadillac and a less Cadillac. But anyway, the wrist really likes being in a real stable geometry, right? Think about boxers, martial artists. You guys, always and gals, you guys want to keep your wrist straight with your hand, and a grip allows you to do that. This is a weak geometry, and that's a weak geometry. You would never want to punch somebody like that or like that, right? So this is a really good stable geometry, and a lot of the stuff in the animal crawl patterns, we use the wrist a lot. So we could do them like in that old classic push-up position, but your wrist will probably get tired, so it's worth an investment of some cheap grips. And here's some cheaper grips right here, and they all work and it'll help us walk around the room and do our animal crawl patterns. So, enough about that. Uh, so, Steph, I'm gonna give you the Cadillacs here. How about that? Okay. And what I'm gonna do, we're gonna start off on uh, camera right here and at the end. And what you're gonna do, Steph, is you're just gonna put the grips down and you're gonna walk out into a plank. So she's gonna walk out into a plank Good, nice, stable plank. You can see her shoulders have to move. And now she's in her stable plank here. Now she's going to keep her legs straight, her knees straight, and she's just going to walk with her little uh, ankles and toes, and she's going to tiptoe, and she's going to fold herself in half in an inverted V. Fold yourself in half like a little uh, caterpillar. Caterpillar with little teeny feet, and there she goes. Look at that. And then she's going to walk out again. Into a plank. No, go the other way. Keep on going across the room. Now she's going to walk out. And she's going to go into another plank. And like a nice little good caterpillar, she's going to just walk with her ankles and her toes. Her feet are pretty much doing all the work. Her legs are straight. And she's folding herself in this inverted V. 
And there we have it very nice, and you can stand up. And we can see that she was pretty limber in that posterior um, kinetic chain. Uh, a lot of people, you might get stuck about, you know, only about a, you know, a really 60 degree angle or something, but she really got in a really tight angle. So great job, Seth. Inchworms, harder than caterpillars. So a caterpillar, they have a little teeny feet, right? And an inchworm, it doesn't. So how do we mimic that? Well, we're gonna break out these really fancy glider plates. Um, and if you don't have um, these really fancy glider plates, and uh, uh, they're really a, it's a, it's a clever um, training tool. However, uh, you can also use just plastic picnic plates, right? Something really cheap if you don't have these guys. And you can, uh, if you're on a wood floor, you can use towels that can slide along the wood floor. So what we're gonna have Stephanie do is the same thing as the caterpillar, but this time her feet are gonna be on these glider plates. And she's going to have to fold herself in half in one motion as she goes to that inverted V. Okay, ready Steph? Ready. So pick up your grips, whatever pair you want. And then we're gonna give her these little glider plates and we're gonna start right here at the edge of this khaki carpet, so right here Steph. So um, she's gonna put the balls of her feet on these glider plates. Do you want me to go down first? Right? Uh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Just there. So she's putting the balls of her feet on the glider plates and then she's gonna go ahead and walk out again into her plank, just like our caterpillar. So there you go, Steph, walk on out. And she's gonna hit this nice, straight, hard plank, maybe a little posterior pelvic tilt here to get this really locked in here. And then in one motion, she's gonna zip herself right, whoop, and then walk out again. Now typically, uh, we would do, what about, I'd say about eight reps of anything. You can go across the room. Here we go, Steph, let's come on back. Good, and why don't we uh, stand up, turn around, Steph, and let only come back and do two more the other way. And again, she puts her, the balls of her feet on the glider plate, her heels are off, that's the way we do it. And she walks out into a plank. And you'll find this is more challenging than the caterpillars. And it really takes a lot of good core strength there. She goes into an inverted V or a pike, right? And then she goes out again. Here she is in her one last inverted V and pike. Excellent. And again, do eight of those, do across the room two or three, four times, and trust me, that's gonna be very challenging. Nice job. Thanks. 45 degree dolphins. Let's do a dolphin first. I like this because anytime we can use the core and kind of fold the core and hinge at the hips, I like that. Better than sit-ups and crunches and all that sort of stuff. I don't like moving that spine. I like moving that spine as a unit and if we hinge the hips we get to do that. So we're gonna have uh, Miss Stephanie go into a uh, plank again on her forearms this time with the thumbs up, with this standard kind of neutral grip. So go ahead, Steph, get into a plank. And we're just gonna have her do a straight ahead dolphin now, uh, which means that she's gonna go into an inverted V. The crown of her head is gonna look back at her shoes, so she's gonna come up in an inverted V. Nope, nope, we just keep our feet where they are, Steph. Okay. So we just kind of come up in an inverted V. Oh. Nope, nope, nope. That's it, we just look at her feet, inverted V, and then she goes back down to a plank. Go back down to a plank, and your head comes up. Oh, okay. Okay, and then here we go, we're gonna go inverted V, she looks, and then she comes back down. There we go, inverted V, and she comes back down. Okay, so that's a nice dolphin. Can you do it again, and come on down. Now, let's have her hip lift, her right hip is gonna drop, and her left hip opens the camera. She's gonna be 45 degrees on the balls of her feet here, 45 degrees. So now she's gonna stay in this position and do the same thing, Steph. So come up in an inverted V. Don't move the feet, keep them over at 45. 
Come on down to a plank. This hip stays dropped. This hip stays up. Come do it again. And what this does, keeping these feet at 45 back here, going back down. By keeping those feet, do a couple more for us. By keeping those feet at 45 over there and that hip up towards camera and this hip down, we work on the obliques, these internal, external obliques on the downside of our body. Feel good? Okay, come through center step. Let's do the opposite. Now she's gonna drop her left hip and opens her right hip towards the wall. Stay on her forearms and okay, inverted V here. Whoop. See your feet at 45, back to a plank. And you can feel this activation here in these internal, external obliques, whereas the straight head dolphin was just the eight pack muscle, but now we get these side oblique muscles, which I really like to get. Great for sports, great for getting country strong. And there we have it, Steph. You good? Great. We're done. This is a bonus feature, not in the book. Uh, before we do a very challenging starfish uh, side plank, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do regressed versions, and Sammy's going to walk us through these. So um, if you're not strong enough for the starfish uh, side plank, uh, do these first. And we're going to first go up in the side plank on her elbow. Notice her top leg is in front of her bottom leg, heel to toe. And so that's a nice stable version. She's got a nice stable platform down there at her feet. Uh, now, Sammy, we can uh, come down if you want. Um, put the top foot in back of the bottom foot. And look at that. So where she's going to come on up again. So what does that do? That just changes the load on those, um, those obliques. Uh, on the right downside of her body, those downside obliques, it just changes the load from the leg being in front of the foot to the leg being in back of the foot. Um, we just got a little bit nice different loading there. I like those different little variations. And she's just holding planks for, you know, eight seconds, uh, 12 seconds, whatever. And she's coming on down. And now we're gonna have her stack her feet. This is what we want. You wanna try to go for stacked feet and that's your minimum base of support, right? It's only one foot length of support. So that's what we want. So now she's gonna come on up and it's a little bit harder to balance here. Just a touch, uh, but that's your goal to try to get to that point. And once you've gotten to this level, then we're doing pretty good. And come on down, Sammy, take, just take a little rest. So now she's gonna go up, and this is the next variation. She's gonna go on up with her feet stacked. Now, she's going to have her hip go up, and she's gonna arch over like she's arch over a bowling ball rolling under her, but the bowling ball comes back to you, so she has to wait for the bowling ball to come back, and now the bowling ball has rolled under her towards us, and now she's going to slowly lower that hip, and she's going to just kiss the floor, just kiss it, and then she's going to arch over the next bowling ball, and it goes under her, and now the bowling ball is coming back, and now she's free to go ahead and do a kiss of the floor, and she arches high, and the bowling ball is under, stay up there, Sammy, and the bowling ball comes back towards us, and now she's free to go another kiss and then one more way up there nice high arch Whee! and then she's gonna come on down kiss the floor she's gonna come back to neutral and she's got it okay that's that variation go ahead and rest sammy uh then there's another variation you can do she's gonna go into another uh side plank here and she's um and she's had that hand behind the head and now she's we're gonna use it so that elbow is an egg and she's gonna put the egg in the egg cup. Her lower hand is the egg cup and that's the egg. And let's just do four of these. So anyway, so these are your uh, regressed side planks that we've progressed um, and get really good and strong at these. And then once you've got really good and strong at these, then we can go ahead and go into our uh, full expression of our animal crawl pattern, which is a starfish, which is coming up. Starfish side plank, pretty advanced. You uh, people who do yoga might have done a similar uh, side plank variation. Uh, there's a lot of regression to this if it's too hard for you, but we're just gonna go right in and see if we can do the hard version. Again, uh, Stephanie's never done this routine, so I 
Thanks, Steph, for indulging me on this. So we're going to get her into a side plank. She's going to face camera here on her side. And what she's going to do, I want her to, uh, now we're going to be up on our arm, Steph, on our hand. And then we're going to go on our side. You're going to open your body. You're going to stack your feet. So what she's going to do is she's going to have this bottom foot down and the top foot. See, right now she has it in front of the bottom foot. I want her to stack this foot on top. That's harder. Uh, this is easier with that top leg over. This is harder. And then she's going to, we have one, two points of a starfish. Now her arm is up. I mean, see how she's stabilized on this shoulder. And now I want her to lift this leg up and activate that glute. And she looks like a starfish. One, two, three, four, and five. And whoa, that's good. And we're done. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, the balance is, it's, uh, it's tough. It's, that's a practice routine. Yeah, yeah, that's practice. the balance, for sure. Yeah. Okay. But it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Plank crab walk. You know, lobsters kind of move forward, you know, they kind of crawl forward. Crabs kind of move to the side. Well, we're going to move to the side. Again, we like it because you really want to upregulate the pec muscles, the stabilizers, the shoulders. And of course, we're always working the core. So all this stuff works all that great stuff. So we're going to have Stephanie go into a plank. And then I'm not going to coach her how to do this really, but she, I just want her to walk first towards camera. And she has to figure out how to do her feet and follow along like any good crab. And we want to make sure that she's in this plank. We don't want her in an inverted V. We want her down into a real good plank here. And go ahead, step, walk this way towards the wall. And again, we're getting some coordination here. We're getting this core going. Walk back to the camera step if you would for us. And again, we can do this across the room several times. And then when you, so right there, Steph, go ahead and stop for me. And see if you can give me like nice four push-ups. One. So here we go. We can add push-ups to this thing. Two. Three. Four. And walk towards the wall for me one more time and do four more push-ups. So you can have fun with your clients or yourself. And you can make it as challenging as you want. You can do more than four push-ups. But see, with the grips, we can get a nice kind of angle and feel that stretchy potential in that shoulder and our natural stopping points. And that looks great, Steph. Unless you want to do some more. <laughs> Good. Nice job. Bunny hops. We love bunnies. They hop. And we're going to hop. So we can do this without grips or with grips. As I said earlier, grips just make it easier on the wrists. And also, because it puts you up a little bit, a few more inches off the ground, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but you don't have to have them if you don't own it. It's okay. So again, we're going to have uh, Steph get into a uh, plank. And she's going to hop in like a little bunny. And her feet are going to hop in into a pretty tight tuck in here. So she's going to hop in in one motion. And then hop back out. And then hop in and hop back out. And you can keep your feet together if you want or put them in where you want. Do it again, hop in, boop, and hop back out, and hop in, and hop back out. Notice this looks a lot like a burpee, part of a burpee. But what we like to do, do four more for me, Steph. What we like to do is it gets everything kind of stretched out and activated, and it's kind of like an easy way to do a burpee or to prepare yourself for burpees, which are really quite a challenging exercise. But let's use this animal crawl pattern to get our bodies prepared for it for more advanced stuff later in the book. Looks good, Steph. <music> Gorilla hops, different than bunny hops. Gorillas kind of walk to the side. They kind of hop around to the side. And we get to activate the uh, oblique muscles where the bunny hop was really kind of into this basic uh, eight pack core muscle here, but now we're kind of working the sides a little more. So what Steph is going to do, she's going to uh, get on the grips and she's going to hop from side to side to either side of the grips. So we're going to keep a, keep a tight tuck here, Steph, all the way in here. 
with your feet. Go ahead, no, your feet way up in here. No, no, gonna bend the knee, bend the knee. Okay, I'll walk in further. Okay, so she's gonna hop over here to the side and hop all the way over to the other side and all the way over to this side and she's gonna go back and forth. Keep on going, Steph. So notice the feet stay tight. They stay tight, they're not way back here. They're kind of tight into the grip. Okay, good, maybe two more. Great, okay, let's stop. Let's do it from the side, okay? Steph, so what you can do, let's face that direction or whatever direction you want. And we'll do it to side camera. And then we're gonna see her feet uh, kind of hop like over here. And she hops from side to side. Again, we're getting ready for a gorilla walk, which is our next exercise. But this activates everything, and it's easy if you keep all your weight over your shoulder, over your wrists, over the grips. And that makes the feet fly around each side fairly easily. Just two more, Steph. And there we have it, Miss Gorilla. You got it. Gorilla walk. So the hops prepared us. We got our obliques activated. Now we're going to put it all together. So Steph is going to start here on one side of the room and she's going to gorilla walk across the room this way. She'll probably get about two in and come back to this way. So right away, she's gonna put her hands over to the side. And so go ahead, Steph. She puts her hand over to the side and she's gonna swing her legs through around and she's gonna stand up. And then she's gonna put her hands over to the side again and she's gonna swing her legs around and she's gonna stand up. We're gonna go back this way now. She puts her hands there, we swing around, she stands up. She puts her hands there, we swing around, we stand up. I'll just go back and forth one more time, one more round trip. So we can see it's really metabolic. Uh, several times across the room, and you're really gonna get a good workout, you're gonna get huffy, your heart rate's gonna go up. And just by using your own body weight, beautiful. We get a great workout. Bird dog. Everybody does bird dog. Uh, it's been around the industry for a long time, a lot of Pilates classes and floor mat classes, and you'll, you've seen it all the time. It's a great way to kind of just stabilize the core and the musculature, and after the last exercise, which is pretty metabolic, this was a nice way to kind of relax a little bit. So we're going to have Steph get down on all fours, and like a nice little bird dog. So she's going to be on her knees, Steph, right? And then what we're going to have her do now and she's gonna go ahead and put out, I like doing the legs first, so she's gonna put out her right leg and she's gonna lock it out straight. Nope, we're gonna put it out straight. There, and we see it activated here and then she's gonna take this arm and she's gonna put it out straight. And we can see her body fighting that, that motion. And then she's gonna go ahead and do the other side. She's gonna put her left leg out straight and her right arm out straight and we're trying to make the body as quiet as possible in here and we see with these off center loads her body's fighting that it's fighting an internal torque and that's what we want okay that's good stuff now we're gonna have bird dog with target circles so we just did the bird dog and so we're gonna have steph get into that bird dog again and show us what that was and what it is, she puts out her right leg and her left arm goes out. Okay, that's the bird dog. Now, Steph, put down that left arm for me. We'll do, we can do a stable version first. She's going to point her toe really sharp. And she's going to, you know, the inside of a target circle, that little circle and then the big circle? She's going to inscribe, and she's going to do little circles as she inscribes, and almost like this is a paintbrush, and she's painting the inside of that target circle. And then she's gonna go the other way. If she went clockwise, then she goes counterclockwise or vice versa. And we can see we're working the glute and all these, these hip rotator muscles and the glute medius and a bunch of stuff. And then Steph, you can do a big, slow target circle up and around. We do the big circle now. And you might do, 824 of these things, each direction. It's terrible. And then go the other direction, Steph. Other direction. Okay. And rest. All right. 
Now, what we're going to do is now we're going to try that again, uh, the full version of it, which is the bird dog and the target circles. So it's less stable. Why? Because this left arm is going to be up. Uh, and let's just do that. Let's, let's do it with the other. Uh, yep. So we're going to do it with her left leg is out straight, her right arm is out straight. So now her base of support is really a little more unstable. And now she has to really work to stabilize her body and really focus on the glute uh, activation, the hip rotator activation deep in there. And she is trying to paint that target circle one direction and now the other direction. She goes the other direction now. And after we do a couple of those, then we do the big target circle. So reverse direction again. And we do the big target circle up and around, trying to stabilize the body, making that hip work like a son of a gun, and then go the other direction, Steph, and she reverses it, and big target circle coming around. And two more. And there we have it, bird dog with target circles. Bear hover. Well, we're gonna get on all fours like a bear. So Steph, you can just get on, on your knees and your hands like a little bear. And um, it's pretty easy. All we're gonna have Steph do is pick her knees up about six inches off the floor. Yeah, she's on the balls of her feet there on her toes. And she's just picking her knees up just six inches off the floor. And that's a bear hover. And we might hold that for eight seconds or 16 seconds or something like that. Uh, and then maybe come down Steph and rest and then come back up into another bear hover. And that's really all it is. It's a pretty simple exercise, but it prepares us for our next exercise, which is even more challenging. Bear hover, pause out. Okay, it's gonna be challenging. It's gonna be contralateral, meaning on opposite sides, just like the bird dog, which was contralateral, uh, one leg out on one side and the other arm on the other side of the body. So we're gonna do our little bear hover, and then we're gonna put out a leg and then put out a paw. Oh. Or a paw and a paw. <laughs> Rear paws and forward paws. So here you go, Steph, she's never done this. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna come on up into a bear hover, and she's gonna put out her right back paw. So go ahead and lift that right back paw step. Just keep it bent, Just, you don't need to put it out straight. There you go, that's all you gotta do. Now she's gonna put out her left front paw. And she's going to try to stabilize. And she's doing a great job. This is very challenging. Come on down, Steph. All paws down. Okay, let's do the other side, all right? So come on up into our bear hover. No, nope, bear hover first. Bear hover first. Leg out first. Okay, that's easy. This is hard when you put this arm out. Boom. And she's showing she's got great stability on either side of her body as she's uh, resisting this huge torque going on inside. Very difficult, very well done, Steph. Bear crawl, forward and reverse. So we've really prepared your body now with all the previous exercises to really do this very functional exercise. And I like to think about having a house burning with smoke. And there's a smoke layer that stops about here, then underneath here, you can kind of crawl out of the house. If the smoke is rising above you, you can crawl maybe underneath that smoke layer. So I like to have some type of real life scenario and so, Steph, we're going to start from this end, and all we're going to do is we're going to bear crawl uh, across the room. So go ahead, we're going to bear crawl, and she's just going to walk like a little bear any way she wants to. Her hands can be in any position, her paws can be in any position. She's kind of keeping her tail down low, and her knees are up, and then she's going to reverse, just reverse. What if this is the only way we had to get out? And you'll see in later sequences, so Steph, come back and forth again. You'll see in uh, other exercises where we put in a heavy viper tube and you got to carry out like a victim out of a fire. And it's a great way to get your body functionally strong for all you tactical athletes and for you people who just want to play around like a bunch of kids, crawling like a bear. Standing stork to side lunge. You've been on your wrists a lot, so let's get off the wrist and just kind of get the body moving a little bit. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have Steph here. She's gonna uh, maybe face camera stuff for us. And she's gonna take a side lunge out and she's gonna touch her ankle. So go ahead and, and she's gonna touch her ankle. 
And then she's going to stand up and she's going to pick up that knee and balance. How about that? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, okay. And then she's going to step to the side and then standing stork. Whoop. Ah. And keep on, <laughs> keep on doing it. So we might want to do about you know, eight of these per side. And actually, if you just go right into it, step and go right to the next one, it'll be easier. It's harder in balance to stay and just stay stabilized. But if we keep it kind of dynamic and put a little rhythm to it, it's easier to balance. Isn't that curious how the body should do it this way, Steph? Towards me. And she steps out. And then she raises that little stork leg. And she steps on out, touches the ankle. And so we've got a real nice kind of movement, lateral side lunge patterns, get the upper outside of the hips, those glute medius going, and those glutes going, and a bunch of great stuff. We get a little balance, we get a little bit of aerobic stuff going on, and there it is, the standing storks. Lizard serratus sling push-ups. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get in the push-up position, and we're just gonna kind of allow the scapula just to kind of collapse together, and then we're gonna push out and kind of round out, like someone has a pin and you're kind of pulling away from the pin, and from the side, again, it looks like our arms are just gonna keep them straight, we're just gonna collapse in at the shoulder blades, and then we're just gonna push out as like an arch. So the idea is that there's this serrated sling that goes around the body from this hip, and it ties in your internal external obliques, it goes around the body, and we're going to turn step around, and it comes across here. Your scapula are sewn onto these rhomboids. It comes around this side. It comes into your serratus anterior, and then it comes into this hip. So it looks like a big ribbon that goes around the body. So we want to activate that. It gets us stronger with push-ups, okay? So we're just going to get into a push-up position, Steph. That's all we're going to do. And I want you just to collapse in at the shoulder blades. And if I put my hands on each side of the shoulder blades, they should collapse in and then push out. Nope, don't do a push up. And push away like you're pushing, you're pulling away from my finger. Nope, come back up. Push away like you're gonna arch. Pull away from my finger. There, and we spread the scaps. There they are, and then collapse in again. These scaps collapse in, and then almost like I'm trying to, with my finger, and keep it a plank. I want you to keep it a plank if you can. Go ahead and collapse in at the shoulder blades. We're not doing a down dog. I know. <laughs> it's kind of hard not to. Got just collapse it at the shoulder blades, and then push out again. Almost like a big arch going on. And those are lizard serratus sling push-ups, like little lizards. Okay, guys, we got it. Good stuff. Contralateral up dog, down dog. So we're gonna have Steph get into our. Maybe an up dog position, Steph. So we're an up dog. And then she's going to go into a down dog. And then she's maybe going to walk her hands back. She's going to keep her feet where they are. And then she's going to touch this opposite arm to the opposite foot. And then she's going to come on, maybe walk the hands out a little bit like a little lobster. Walk them out a little bit like a little lobster. Go into another up dog. Go into an up dog. Then go into a down dog. Walk like a little lobster back, and now it's going to be this right arm to the left ankle. And let's just do one more each side. Go to an up dog for me. And now a down dog. As she walks back, and she's going to touch this arm to that. Boom! Oh. And one more step, other side. Up dog. Down dog. Right arm to left ankle. And folks, we're done.